what did you make of I suppose the bounce back session James, it was good to see the market stabilising and it did help that overnight we saw ratings agency Fitch come out to reaffirm the triple A rating of France and European markets were higher with the US market flat. So all in all, setting a pretty good stage for the Australian market today, except that it was quite a slow day and that's ahead of the budget which will be released tonight. So volume's quite light, only $4 billion being traded. And I guess what one of the things that the market is looking for is confirmation of physical tightening and that will eat uh, that will actually go into expectations around interest rates. So if we have a look at the areas of the market that did well, they were the consumer discretionary and the telecom sectors. And if we have a look at the areas which benefit from falling interest rates, it's the consumer discretionary space and also high yielding sectors like the telecom space. So Telstra having a good day up by 1.7%. In fact, all sectors on the market low with just one exception and that was the material space which was dragged down by Iluka's performance today. But all in all, a stabilization in markets, a slow volume day ahead of the budget and the market watching that budget out in Australia tonight. I suppose uh, the, the political landscape is having a drag effect, if you like, in the investment attractiveness of, of Australia, its equities and so forth. And, and, and how does tonight's budget, if you like, fit into that? The political environment certainly hasn't helped, but the fact that we are seeing a slowing growth in China certainly plays into, I guess, the investment theme for Australia or a reason to be cautious around Australia. So while there hasn't been much demand for our equity market, Jeremy is absolutely right in that there has been quite strong uh, demand for Australian bonds. So I guess investors around the world are a little bit short of safe haven assets, especially in an environment where the UK, uh, Europe, as well as Japan and the US see interest rates so low. And as Jeremy mentioned, uh, the real interest rates a whole different scenario altogether of course the budget's going to be very much in focus tonight and one of the main impacts on the market is of course that mining space and that's where going, we're going to be watching a lot of uh, the things coming out tonight at 7 30 p.m so if we have a look at the mining resource rent tax that's supposed to come in as of the first of july so that's a 30 percent uh, tax on our mining companies and if we have a look at that that was supposed to also feed into a one percent tax cut for small businesses but there have been media reports and really rumors around a possible change in that 1% small business tax and perhaps that we could see some sweetness for low income earners instead to help with that carbon tax. Of course, if we do start to see sweetness for our low income earners, that could be a positive for the consumer staples and the con uh, consumer discretionary space because our low income earners do spend to tend to spend uh, any extra money that they get. So that would be a positive for the economy. But of course, the miners are really watching that diesel rebate as well. At the moment, the miners get a uh, diesel rebate because in terms of the fuel exercise, a lot of them don't use the on-road public infrastructure. It's really off-road costs. So that exercise tax, uh, that diesel exercise tax is currently at 38 cents per litre and they get a rebate for that whole 38 cents. The part of the carbon tax is that that's going to be cut by six cents, but if we do see a bigger cut than that, then that's likely to impact on the miners because they get around about $2 billion per annum worth of rebates a year from that diesel rebate. So that's another thing that the miners are going to be uh, watching very carefully. So altogether, pretty exciting times with the Australian budget coming out tonight, and I guess we'll be dissecting how that's going to impact on particular stocks tomorrow. Today, uh, Luca in particular, Julia Lee, I wanted to get your thoughts, particularly, I suppose, in the market reaction today. I mean, this has been a market darling uh, for the last few years, and it's no wonder why, because in 2011, we saw the stock price of Iluca up by 70%, and in 2010, this is a stock that was up by 155%. Of course, what we saw last year was very different in that we saw Rutile as well as synthetic Rutile prices rising very strongly. In fact, in the second half of the year, prices were up by 80 to 90%. But what we're really seeing now in 2012 is weakness in zircon demand. And if we have a look at what zircon's used for, it's used for ceramics. Now, first quarter, the first quarter in terms of zircon demand is usually quite soft because of the Chinese New Year. But the problem is we've, uh, we've seen that softness continue into the second quarter of the year as well. And that puts a real risk that we are going to see an earnings downgrade uh, coming through from iLuca. So if we have a look at what's happening in terms of Chinese demand, uh, throughout March we saw some, some of the Chinese uh, ceramic manufacturers with their factories either closed or partially uh, closed for the month of March. So it does look like demand has been quite soft. And I guess because of the softness in demand, we're seeing iLuca pulling back on its full year forecast, uh, production forecast for Zircon as you would 
when demand is soft. So we have seen those uh, production forecasts for Zircon pulling back and a big reaction in terms of Iluka's shares. Uh, the shares falling more than 12% today. But if you have a look at the last couple of years, the share price appreciation in this stock has been so huge, but really on the back of that uh, Rutile uh, price gain that we've seen. But today it was all about Zircon. Your thoughts on the stock, Jeremy?